Hi guys, my name is Keen Clark, and today we're going to build a mobile phone app to scan barcodes. It's going to call a cloud microservice and retrieve product information like this to tell us a little bit more about the product barcode. It's going to look like this. So first, we'll have the mobile phone application. This is going to be built as a Cordova app. It's going to be built using HTML5 and JavaScript. And we're going to use a Cordova plugin to scan the barcodes. This application is going to talk to a Node.js microservice. And we're going to use this service to call a third party service and retrieve barcode information. Now, why might we want this service in the middle mediating all of our requests to some third party? Well, here's why. Our third party service talks SOAP. If we route our requests through our Node.js microservice, we can marshal these responses and translate them into JSON. And as we know, SOAP responses can be a little verbose. So we can take something that looks like this, and turn it into something much shorter that looks like this. The JSON body with a property name, price, and image. A much more concise protocol, much better suited for mobile, and no wasting excessive bandwidth sending all of this junk across the wire. Let's get started with our project. First, we're going to build a client-side application. I'm going to log in on openshift.feedhenry.com using my username and password. Once logged in, I'm going to visit the projects page. I'm going to click new project. I'm going to choose the hello world project and give it a title. Once I've given my project a title, I'm going to click create. Once this is complete, I can click finish. Today we're going to be dealing with the Cordova Lite app. In the next tutorial, we'll deal with the cloud application and building the integration into the backend system. So I'm going to click on the Cordova light app. I'm going to rename it to be barcode client. Now we're ready to write some code. To do this, I'm going to visit the editor. As part of today's video, I'm going to be following along the instructions in this blog post. You can find the link to this post in the description below. Since we've already created the project, we're going to get started by opening our application and making the changes suggested. We're going to open the www directory, and then we're going to open the file index.html. This file is what gets opened when our app first starts, and it's from here that all of our other assets are included, things like CSS style sheets, and JavaScript files as well. You'll notice that we can change the text content in here. So I'm going to change the title to read barcode scanner. And I'm also going to change the description to read, press the button below to scan a barcode. I'm going to update the text of the button to read scan barcode and then we're going to save our changes. Now we're going to update what plugins get included with our application. To do this, we highlight the www directory, click File, New File, and we give it the title config.json. We're going to retrieve the contents of this file from the blog post because it's pretty long. This is the contents of the completed config.json file on GitHub. You'll notice that at the very bottom we include the barcode scanner, but we also include all of the other plugins that our application might use as well. I'm going to paste them into this file and then save it by clicking File and then Save. Now that we've added in our config file, 
we're going to open the hello.js file. And this is the JavaScript logic which our application uses. You'll notice that right now, we retrieve an element on the page called say hello, which is this large blue button. And we bind the click handler, which happens every time the user clicks on this button. When the user clicks on the button, we change the contents of a paragraph tag, which is hidden down below this button to read calling cloud dot dot dot. We then use the feed Henry SDK in this block of code to call our cloud app under the path hello. We pass it some data, which we retrieve from the page in a hello underscore to text field, which is sitting here. And then we take the response and we inject it into this hidden paragraph tag, the same one that we retrieved above to put in our loading message. We're going to make use of a barcode plugin, which we just included. And from the code snippet in the blog post, I know I can call this using cordova.plugins.barcodescanner.scan. We want to do something with the scanned result. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the contents of our text field be the barcode so that we can see the scanner in action. So I'm going to take the snippet of code down below, which we use to retrieve the value of our hello to field. And instead I'm going to make use of it to set it to the result barcode that we retrieve. So we're going to set it to results.text. And then we're going to call the cloud as we did before. So I'm going to move this $fh.cloud block to inside our barcode scanner callback function. And now we see we still have our click event bound and all of this code happens whenever we click on this button. Once we click on the button, we call our barcode scanner. And whenever the barcode scanner successfully gets a barcode scanned back, this function triggers. In here, we update the text field to have its value be the number that we retrieved back from the barcode scanner. And then we use the Feed Henry Cloud SDK to call the Red Hat Mobile Cloud. We send through right now the data hello as the value of the text field. And last but not least, once the SDK successfully returns from the cloud, we update a tag down below to show the response from our cloud app. If an error occurs, we use the alert dialog box to tell the user something has gone wrong. We're going to make some changes to our cloud app in the second part of this tutorial to allow us to respond to barcodes rather than just text entered in here. In preparation for this, we're going to make some small changes to our cloud call. First, we're no longer going to call the property that we sent through to the cloud hello. We're going to call it barcode. And secondly, we're going to do something a little bit different with the result. We're going to retrieve our product from the cloud. That will be our result. And with this product, we're going to append an image tag into our page with the product image URL that the cloud has determined. And we're also going to append the product name as well. Now that we've made our changes to the JavaScript, I'm going to save this file. And we've now finished the changes we need to make to the client side app. Remember, you can always take a look at the completed code for all of the files in our blog post. There's also a useful cheat sheet at the bottom of the post. Although we finished all of the coding for our client side project, we still can't try it out because our cloud application needs to be updated to receive a barcode property and to return a product image and a product name. Let's make a quick change to the cloud application, which will hard code these properties just to allow us to test out our code. And remember, in part two, we'll be coming back to a more in-depth tutorial about how we can update this cloud app. To change the cloud apps code, we're going to click on the apps, cloud apps and services link at the top. And we're going to click on this middle column, the cloud app. Again, we're going to go to the editor. We're going to go to lib, hello.js, and we're not gonna worry about the contents of this right now since we'll be dealing with this in a future post. What we will do is take the completed example of this hello.js file from the blog post, 
and just copy the contents of it into the file, like this. You'll notice that down here, we're returning an image URL and a product name. We're going to click File, Save, and because this is our first time changing the cloud app, we're going to need to deploy. To do this, we click on the Deploy link on the left, and then we click on the Deploy Cloud App button. We can follow the progress by clicking on the blue bar. Since this is our first time, it's going to take a little while. Now that our app is finished deploying, we can go ahead and build. I'm going to go back to the Apps, Cloud Apps and Services screen by clicking on the link at the top. And now we're going to navigate to the barcode client again. This time we're going to visit the Build screen. And we're going to build today for Android. If you've got a production instance of Red Hat Mobile, you can probably build for iOS as well. However, in our free trial environment on OpenShift, only Android is possible right now. We don't need to change any of these options, so I'm just going to click Build. Once the build is complete, you'll see I get a barcode and a download link, along with a short URL that I can make use of to install the binary onto my device. I can then scan this barcode using the Red Laser app on my device and install the app onto my phone. Once I've installed the app, I can then press the Scan Barcode button. You'll notice the camera appears, and I can then proceed to scan a barcode. I can verify that the barcode read in the text box matches what's on my book here, although right now the response we get back is just hard-coded as the art of computer programming, since we haven't built the cloud application yet. Stay tuned for the second part of this video, where we build the Node.js microservice to talk to this third-party SOAP service, retrieve the product name, image, and price from the barcode, and return it back to the mobile client. Thanks for watching.